Hey, I am so excited. We've been talking about this all week. Pleased to welcome to the phones, Spike Cohen. Good morning. Good morning, Kevin. Thanks for having me on, man. 2020 vice presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party. Uh, are we going to see you run again in 2024? Uh, we are. I'm not sure yet. Uh, that's something I will be deciding uh, over the next few months. Uh, the biggest question will be is, uh, you know, is this the best thing that I can do to help move the party and the and the liberty movement forward? Uh, but as of yet, right now, there are still some questions that it's too soon to be able to answer that yet. Let's talk about the Libertarian Party. Uh, let's just, you know, sure. at a at a core level, uh, what do what does the Libertarian Party stand for? Sure. So, I mean, the quick elevator pitch is Libertarians believe that we do best when we are most free. And conversely, we believe that uh, if you look at the problems that we are facing right now, they are largely uh, a result of the fact that there is too much power in the hands of too few people who have gotten that power from clawing that power and all the money and freedom and responsibility that they've taken from us uh, and taken it out of our hands and put it in their hands to enrich themselves and the well-heeled cronies that put them in office. And that the only way that we're going to truly be able to fix the problems that they've created or made worse is to take that power, freedom, money, and responsibility and put it back in our hands where it always belongs. I've said a couple of times on the show that, you know, I am not a libertarian, but I feel like everybody is a libertarian, right? I mean, I think it's it's hard to disagree with those values. It's it's kind of like a horoscope. If you read it right, it applies to everybody. So if if this is a, I mean, I can't imagine someone saying, I don't agree with that. So what has been the, I guess, what becomes the issue? Or is it that, you know, we as a nation are just ingrained in this two-party system? Well, there, I would say there is a, a fairly sizable group of people who would listen to that and say, I don't believe that. I mean, there are people out there who believe that freedom or, quote unquote, too much freedom is the real problem. And that, you know, if we would just listen to our betters, that uh, that things would be better. But I, but I think the much bigger problem is that um, because we are in a constructed two party system, because we're in a system whereby you are told that, you know, you basically have to pick from uh, one of two so-called lesser evils, uh, that when another party comes and says, or another candidate in a, in a given race comes and says, hey, I'm running for office and my ideas sound better, people have been largely programmed. And, and there's also a lot of, at this point, regulations and things that are in place that make it uh, functionally impossible for third parties to be able to effectively run against the big two parties that people get stuck into well, if it's not a Republican or a Democrat, they can't win. And that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because if someone thinks that something can't win, then they're not going to vote for it, which means they can't win. So that's truly been our biggest challenge is both the regulatory burdens that the, that the duopoly, the Republicans and Democrats have put in place, but also the, the mental uh, and psychological burden that many voters have. And it, it's really been incumbent on us to try to you know demonstrate that we can actually – a, that we can win, and that B, when we do win, it's not just your team winning, you actually win for a change. I I know there's there's a, and I don't know if a lot is the correct measurement, but I know there are hundreds of libertarian candidates in elected office around the country, right? Yes. Everything from yes. school board to uh, sheriffs to, uh, you know, you name it. Why not focus on all of those smaller, local, you know, potentially lower bar, kind of easier to maybe in my mind, easier to win positions than put so many eggs in a presidential basket? So I actually agree with that. I believe that and I, I've been you know, shouting it from the rooftop. I believe that we should be focusing local. Uh, we can take the same amount of resources that we will put into a given presidential race and put it into effectively winning several hundred or, or even you know, a few thousand local races. Um, and because, uh, you know, a lot of people long before they're going to vote for a libertarian in the White House or, or the, even the governor's mansion, uh, for that matter, or for their local congressional race, 
Uh, they need to see how libertarianism works in their backyard. And that's also where we can show it the most effectively and acutely, because most of the tyranny that occurs in a day-to-day basis isn't happening. Uh, you aren't being affected mostly from things that are happening in the White House or even that governor's mansion. It's, it's what's happening in City Hall or in, or in the county council in, in your given area where you live. Uh, with that said, um, Kevin, the reality is there are many states where not only do we have to run gubernatorial candidates, candidates, Senate candidates, and, and a presidential candidate, uh, but they have to get a certain percentage of the vote in order for us to even be allowed on the ballot. That's one of the many uh, ballot restrictions I was talking about. So we're actually forced to run national and statewide candidates and actually perform to a certain level in order to even have those local candidates on the ballot as libertarians. So it's sort of this, it, it, again, that's one of the many uh, restrictions that are in place, and it forces us into a strategy that doesn't necessarily benefit us. He's Spike Cohen, the 2020 Libertarian vice presidential candidate. Kevin Mullen sitting in for Fred Lefevre. Fred Lefevre in the morning news. Fred will be back on air on Monday. In the meantime, we're talking with Spike Cohen, activist, speaker, web developer, man about town. And uh, if I'm reading my calendar correctly, are you down in Miami right now? That's correct. I'm in Miami right now for a, a libertarian event called Liberty Con, which is hosted by Students for Liberty. And it's a, a really fun weekend event. We got uh, Liberty speakers from all over the world, actually. It's an international uh, organization of students and activists from uh, from every uh, – there are, there are over 100 countries uh, represented here. Uh, it's a really cool event. We got an email. We talked about this a little bit, but got an email that says, L's have at best – played spoiler during the last few presidential elections. Isn't this the opposite of your mission or purpose? Uh, I wouldn't say it's the opposite, but but here's the thing. If all we do is play a spoiler, which means that uh, only a small percentage of voters are so disgusted with the system uh, of, of you know just Republicans and Democrats that they have to choose from, that they will vote for us fully aware or mostly aware of the fact that we have no chance of winning at all, then that's an even worse condemnation of the two-party system because it means that they'd rather uh, they'd rather vote for a candidate that they have, know has little to no shot of winning than the available options that they have. Um, so if if that were literally the only thing that we could accomplish, we would at least be a vote of no confidence, a vote of none of the above for the the two candidates that the duopoly have presented. Uh, but no, that's certainly not counter to our our, our core beliefs. We believe that you should have as many options as possible. If, if you're a nation of 330 million people being told that you have to choose from two corrupt politicians in every single cycle, not just for president, but every other race uh, up and down the, the ballot, is absurd. And it, and it has not served us. And it, it's, it's only served the ruling class and the and the, the multi-billionaire, multi-million dollar, corp, uh, multinational corporations that own them. You ran in 2020 uh, with as the vice president, uh, vice presidential seat for the Libertarian Party. Um, what would you be doing differently right now if you were in office? It, well, for one thing, if I were in office right now, I would stop trusting the corporate appointed experts, uh, and I would start trusting the American people to make decisions for themselves. And what that would look like is, uh, you know, de- obviously depending on the given office, that would depend on exactly what I could be doing. But if, for example, we're talking the White House, the first thing I would be doing before even talking to Congress uh, would be looking at every single uh, presidential uh, order or, pre- or emergency order that's been in place. And some emergency orders have been in place for longer than most of us have been alive, just to show how absurd government can be, that something can be an emergency for longer than you and I have been alive. I would look at all of those various presidential orders and start looking at them. And if, and if the, the purpose of those orders uh, is for anything other to protect the lives, rights, and property of people. Uh, and, and if any of them was done uh, outside of, of the of mandate of what a president is even allowed to do in the first place, then it would go on the chopping block. And that would be well over 90% of the presidential orders that were in place. And when people saw the direct benefit that they would get, of, that they would have from having that power uh, and, and, and that freedom given back to them, I would then use that as a negotiating tool going to Congress and saying, you know, the people are on the side of freedom. Would, do you want to be on that side or do you want to be on the side of continuing to, to try to keep the boot on their neck? 
Do you ever feel like you're you're pushing a rock up a mountain? <laughs> I mean, we're, we have a system that is designed as a good cop, bad cop system. It is a system where you have to choose from one side that tells lies that you kind of like, but you know they're not really going to follow through, versus another side that tells lies that you really don't like, but you also know they're not going to follow through either. Um, and so really it just comes down to team sports. It becomes, uh, you know, is Team Red going to win or is Team Blue going to win? Well, I hope Team Red wins because they say the stuff I like most of the time. Uh, I know they're not really going to do it, but if they don't win, then we're going to be ruled over by the people who say the stuff that I don't like. Of course, they work with the side that I do like, but and, and they're both screwing me over. But, yeah, I'll, I'll keep voting for that. And, yeah, I mean, it, it is a it is a, a difficult one to hold, but someone has to do it because if things keep going the way they are, there's going to continue to be more suffering. There's going to be another COVID regime in the future. There's going to be more pointless wars in the future. There's going to be more people whose lives are ruined because of a bad government edict. There's going to be people whose businesses are ruined. There's going to be people uh, whose every aspect of their life is harmed because of an out-of-control government uh, that seeks to rob us to enrich themselves. And uh, so we have to do it. And uh, we just keep pushing forward. All right. <laughs> you are on the air with Spike Cohen. What's your name and what's your question? Uh, I just wanted to say uh, keep it going, dude, because the lesser of two evils is still evil and it always will be. And the two parties suck. I vote libertarian every time I get yeah. a chance. I wish there was more. I vote no on all the tax issues. I'm voting no on 10. I'm voting no on 7. I'm voting no on 11. I want less government. I want them out of my life. I want to make my own decisions and keep it going, dude. I'll vote libertarian every time I get the chance. Amen. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much for the call. Thank you. And what he didn't say was that he didn't believe any of that until he watched this this interview, and now he is fully on board. But (laughs) yeah, a vote for any evil is evil. And uh, and I'll and I'll go a step further. We're often told when you vote libertarian or vote third party or independent that your your so called throwing your vote away or wasting your vote. I would say that wasting your vote is voting for one of the same two people who you know help to create this mess or make this mess worse uh, in the vain hope that this time around they'll stop doing that. That, That's throwing your vote away. Throwing your vote away is voting for the status quo. Uh, The only way you cannot throw your vote away is to vote for someone new and a a new idea, And, and an idea that really goes to a foundational principle of this country, which is that the people are supposed to be free. They're supposed to be empowered. They're not supposed to be, uh, you know, treated like children where everything is taken from them and, and whatever the government decides they should be given back is given to them. Let's go back to the phones with one last question. You're on with Spike Cohen. Hey, this is great. Um, hey, Spike, I've been following your uh, your activities down in Gastonia. Um, can you tell us mm-hmm. what's the status right now of the, of the issue with uh, the homeless vet? Sure, absolutely. Um, so uh, a quick briefing for those who don't know what uh, what he's talking about. In Gastonia, North Carolina, the police there uh, wrongfully arrested and um, assaulted a uh, homeless veteran, uh, and uh, they paid his service dog. The service dog later passed away. Uh, they refused to release the body cam footage uh, to show why they did it. Uh, now, thankfully, at this point, uh, my organization, You Are the Power, we have successfully uh, worked to get the body cam footage released and all the charges dropped against uh, the veteran uh, Joshua Ward. In fact, today is actually, yesterday was actually the one-year anniversary of when this actually happened to him. Um, so that has happened. We have gotten the, the footage released. We've also, um, the, the community and, and, and Joshua's loved ones have really come together to help him. He's in a much better place now than he was before. Uh, unfortunately, the local officials uh, will not uh, move to investigate the, the officers who did that to him or their own officials for who fought so hard in court to get it released. Uh, but we're working on two fronts. Uh, one front is to get uh, law enforcement at a higher level involved to investigate it and hopefully to prosecute the officers and officials involved. And then the second front is to uh, get changes made to North Carolina's law, uh, state laws regarding body cam footage release to make it a lot easier for someone who makes an allegation against a police officer to be able to get the footage released. If the police want it released, it happens instantly. If they don't want it released, you have to spend tens of thousands of dollars and, and, and hundreds of hours in court to try to get it released, and that's simply... That's not right. We, we the, uh, the taxpayer pays for that footage. It should be released immediately. But thankfully, the charges against Joshua have been dropped, uh, and the footage have been released. Uh, and if you go to my YouTube channel, you can see it for yourself. 
Um, this is actually what You Are the Power does uh, across the country. Uh, we find issues where uh, people are being run roughshod by their local government. Uh, we step in and we help fight for liberty and justice in that area. We show people how uh, the problem is tyranny and the solution is liberty. So thank you for bringing that up. Spike, thank you so much for joining us on the show. He's Spike Cohen. You can check him out on his website, spikecohen.com, or learn more about uh, You Are the Power. Uh, that's youarethepower.net. Thanks so much for spending some time with us, and uh, good luck as you uh, discern what your next steps are uh, in your best way to serve the serve the party. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for having me on. Have a great morning. All right, Spike Cohen.